Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you how to turn different photos into textures in Photoshop. We'll show you how to make these textures visible over the whole photo or just the background. You'll learn how to change and even invert colors and you'll learn how to clone out any areas that you don't want visible in your texture. Here we are in Photoshop. We've got three different textures that we're going to be applying to our image. I wanted to give you guys some variation. Now, all of these textures are from pexels.com. It's a stock image website. I just go over there and type in textures into the search bar. There's so many free textures available. So we're going to start by using our move tool. We're just going to click and drag each one of our images right over top of our main photo of our subject. There we go. Let's just click and drag each of these and hit F for full screen. And with each of these photos, we're going to do something slightly different. So we're going to go ahead and start with this image here. Now, the big deal with turning these images into textures is just changing the blend mode. That's a big part of it. And I've got a couple keyboard shortcuts that are going to make that much easier. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit V on my keyboard for the move tool. I'm going to hit shift and then plus and minus. And as I hit shift plus, it's going to scroll through my different blending modes. You can see them changing right over here. Right now we're set to soft light. Okay. Shift plus and minus. This is the easiest way to see how these textures are going to wind up affecting your image. For the most part, I think soft light and overlay are going to be the most effective. Now you can also change the opacity. You can hit V for your move tool and then use one through 10. For instance, if I hit five, it's going to change my layer opacity to 50%. If I hit one, it's going to be 10%. Zero, it's going to be back up to 100. Now we're going to hit control or command T. We're just going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to just rotate this around. So we can hold shift and it's going to make sure I rotate by increments. It's going to keep everything by 15 degree increments. There we go. And let's go ahead and just stretch this out. I'm going to hold alt or option and bring this right out. That looks pretty good. Now let's say you like this texture, but you don't want it visible over top of your subject. Maybe you just want it visible in the background. Well, I'm going to make this invisible temporarily. We're going to click on our background. I'm going to go to select and then down to select subject. Now that my subject is selected, you can see it does a really great job. We're going to go ahead and turn our texture back visible. And I'm going to simply click right down here on my layer mask icon. So let's click on our layer mask. In this case, it did the opposite of what we want. There we go. No big deal. Simply click on your layer mask and hit control or command I. And there we have it. Now our texture is just visible on the background. You can hold shift and click on your layer mask to enable or disable that if you'd like to, or you can simply click on your layer mask, then go to window and then down to properties. There we go. And then you can simply bring the density of your layer mask down. So you'll get a little bit of an in-between effect. You can see all the way up and there we go all the way down. All right. So you can have it be just a little bit visible over your subject if you want. And that looks pretty good there. Now, let's say we have some areas like this where it's just a little bit too strong of an effect. Maybe I just want to get rid of this. What we want to do is use the clone stamp tool on this layer only. So we'll hit S for the clone stamp tool. Now, with your clone stamp tool, where it says sample up here at the very top, you want to make sure it says current layer. Okay, so I'm going to hit Alt or Options, go ahead and sample there, and then paint over the area that I don't want visible. This is a really effective way for just reducing texture in certain areas that might be a little bit distracting. You can see I'm just kind of getting rid of these little distractions here. Now, if you have this set to current and below, you can actually see it starts to mess things up. We don't want that. So make sure you're set to current layer and you're good to go with your texture. I think this looks really nice. And you can see I've kind of chosen a moody type image to add a texture. I think these tend to work well. Now, I'm going to just lower the opacity of the entire layer just a little bit. I like this quite a bit. Now, let's say you have a different texture in mind. We're going to choose this texture to start with. Let's start by just hitting Control or Command T. We're going to rotate this right around. There we go. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Fantastic. And then start with the same process. So I'm going to hit V for my move tool and then shift plus and minus. And that's just going to scroll through my different effects, my different blending modes and to see what we've got. Now, let's say we get to something like screen where we like this effect, but maybe we want it to be just a little bit more dramatic. We can actually use levels to change the light levels of this image. It's going to change how the texture actually interacts with our image. So if you want to use levels, I recommend first changing it back to a normal blend mode. Then we're going to right click on here and I'm going to go down to where it says convert to a smart object. There we go. 
Let's change it back to screen. And now that we have this as smart object, you can see the smart object icon there. I'm gonna hit control or command L for our levels. Now with our levels active, I'm gonna simply make my darks a bit darker and we're gonna do the midtones as well. And that's just gonna make them less visible. There we go, we can hit okay. Now the reason why I chose to do a smart object is because now we have smart filters. So if I wanna change that levels, I can do it really easily. I can just double click right here on the levels and I can make some changes there and hit okay and we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna hit control or command T. We're gonna right click and flip this vertically. It won't show your effects while you're doing a transform, but that's okay. So you can see either way you like it. I kind of liked it the other way a little bit better. Now, the other thing you can do is invert this entire effect. So if you hit control or command I, it's going to invert your effect. Now we had it set to screen before. Let's go ahead and try it on multiply and you can see we have a completely different effect, okay? So if we turn our invert off, we can change this back to screen and you're good to go. The other thing that we wanna show you, I actually think this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity a little bit. I do wanna change the color a little bit because you can see it's got this um, kind of like yellowish color and my background has a bit of a bluish color. We're gonna lower the opacity too. So I want this color to match the color of my background. We're gonna hit Control or Command U and that's gonna bring up hue slash saturation. I'm gonna click on this colorize icon here. Okay, and this allows me, I'll just give you like a, you know, really stark example so you can see what we're do doing here. This allows you to actually colorize your texture to match the background. And I think this is a really effective method here. So let's go ahead and write about there and we're just gonna bring our saturation on down. I'm gonna bring my lightness down on this too. There we go. And we'll bring the saturation up just a little bit and I wanna kind of match that background color. That looks a little bit better. So the nice thing about these smart objects is I can just turn this off and on. You can see the before and after really well there. And there we go. We've got a nice subtle texture. It adds to the photograph, but it doesn't, it's not too much. It's not overwhelming. Fantastic. We've got one more that I wanna show you here. And this is very stark. I think this is an overhead picture of like some water and some beach. It looks like a crazy place on earth. But even this sort of thing we can use as a texture. Let's hit Control or Command T. We're gonna go ahead and stretch this out. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna start flipping through our blend mode. So let's hit V and then Shift plus and minus, plus or minus rather, to just kind of go through them and find something that works. Uh, I think that actually starts to look really cool, but here again, it's gonna need some adjustments. So anytime you wanna do an adjustment, um, I'm just gonna remember that Lighten looked pretty good. So let's put it back to normal. We're gonna right click and go to convert to a smart object. There we go. Go ahead and put it back to lighten and here we can start to make some changes. I'm gonna hit control or command L for levels. There we go. All right, this is looking really good there. I just wanted to kind of get it be less of an effect. Let's hit control or command T for our transform. I'm just gonna bring this nice and large. The thing that's in my opinion really cool about these effects is that uh, it doesn't really matter if you stretch them and make them a little bit larger and maybe they lose a letter, little resolution. In my opinion, that's totally okay because there's just, there are texture overlays that go over top of the entire image. All right, now this is looking pretty good. Let's hit V and then shift plus or minus to go continue to move through these to see, ooh, something like that even looks pretty cool. To see how these wind up affecting our image. I did like this lighten effect. I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, screen I like as well. Now, I do wanna change these colors, so let's hit Control or Command U, okay? And here we can simply adjust our hue if we want to do that to get everything to blend, or we click on this Colorize option and that's just gonna get everything to kind of colorize back to the image that we want. And then let's hit Control or Command L. Oh, I already did a level, so we can just double click on this original one. That's the nice thing about doing levels. There we go. Let's hit okay, and everything kind of updates there again. And then I'm gonna hit Control or Command T, we're gonna right click, I'm gonna just say flip vertical so we can just see how this looks. Now, when you're doing your transformations, your smart filters are not going to be visible. That's the only slight downside. But if you don't mind, you can always right click on your layer and you can go down here to rasterize layer. It's gonna apply all of those effects. That way, if I hit Control or Command T, now I can see them all in real time. So I can continue to kind of move this around and see how it might interact with my image. There we go. Let's go ahead and flip this up there. I think this is kind of like cool coming in there. 
Okay, it's gonna take just a second to transform that because we made it quite large. And then I think our color needs a little bit of adjustment. So we're just gonna go to hue slash saturation again. There we go. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna lower the color a little bit. So you can see like basically just an overhead picture of the earth turns into a really nice texture. One thing I wanna stress, you wanna avoid any sharp lines like this. You can actually see the line there. So we're just gonna add a layer mask to that. And then with our just soft edge brush, we're just gonna paint black right around that edge. That's just gonna make sure we don't have any uh, visible lines in our texture. And then the fun thing about this is you can go in here and you can start to combine these textures together. You can simply add them up and get something that you would not have been able to get before. So you can see all three of these textures are now visible, each one adding a little bit to the mood of the photograph. This is kind of nice. This one is visible mostly on the background, not so much on our subject. And overall, I think we have a really nice moody image that looks really good. Let's just add, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a curves adjustment layer. You just bring this down a little bit here. And then right here in the center, here we go. Let's make a selection right here. My layer mask, I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert that. There we go. Let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. We'll just add a nice big blur on here. And it's just gonna give us a good vignette. There we go. It just draws a little bit more attention to our subject and kind of enhances the effect of those textures just a little bit on top of everything. Now, for a final effect, if you wanna add a LUT to your image, this will actually color the entire photograph, and this can kinda of help bring all the textures together. So we're gonna to go to Layer, we're gonna to go to New Adjustment Layer, and we're gonna go over to Color Lookup. Now, a Color Lookup is a, also known as a LUT, and a bunch of these come actually preloaded with Photoshop, and we actually have an entire collection of them available on flurn.com. You can click on the little banner or the link down below to see our collection of LUTs. But there are some included with Photoshop, so let's show you those. Check this out. I'm gonna go to edgyamber.lut, and look at that. Just this one click, and it brings together all of our colors to this image. We also have a couple others, like a candlelight. It's kind of a cool look there. Uh, we're gonna go to our moonlight and see how that looks. Oftentimes these are like pretty uh, pretty strong effects, but the nice thing about these is that they're gonna color not only your image, but they're gonna color your texture as well because they're on top of everything. And that kind of just brings everything together. You can always reduce the opacity a little bit if you'd like, and there you've got your effect. All right, let's take a look at our before and our after. So if you wanna add a little bit of artistic flair to your image, simply type in textures in a free stock image website like Pexels, or you can actually download these images and this sample PSD on flurn.com. I'll all the link right down below, and you can use these exact sample textures. Thanks again for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll send you a free tutorial every single week. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.